Hello everybody, so my next project today is getting back on these uh, seats here for the 72 Olds Cutlass Convertible. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these um, powder coated seat frames that my customer restored. And today we're putting the burlap over the seat frames, which is the first step before we put on the foam. So here we go. So what I think is so funny is that I've been doing this for so long, over 40 years, 41 at this point, and I can do this stuff with my eyes closed, literally. Uh, I can do it with my hands only, not to brag, but I'm just thinking to myself, it's kind of funny that I did this every day for that many years, decades and decades and decades, and here I am making a video about something that I've always done. It's just a little strange to me. So talk about old school. You don't see anything like this on new cars. So this 1972 Old Cutlass convertible and all the cars of that era and earlier. What they did is they took the seat springs and what they do is they put this burlap over the top which separates the foam. So the purpose of the burlap is so that the foam doesn't cut through um, the metal springs here. It creates that barrier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install it. So the width of the burlap I think is like 40 inches wide. Uh, which is not wide enough for this um, back seat backrest. So what you want to do is you run it, run it down lengthwise. So make sure you got a nice overlap here on the ends. I like to leave about a good three or four inches overlap. Where we start is to take the old hog rings, put it in the hog ring pliers for those that are just starting out. For people that know what they're doing, you know what this is. So what I do is I usually start off in four corners. So I'll anchor down four corners Pull the material tight. So your four corners gets all the wrinkles out. Then you just fill everything in in the middle around the outside perimeter. So that's pretty much it. If you wanted to, you can put more if you want. So let's try that.
So now what we have is we've got a real nice tight face on here. Uh, some guys might think about putting additional hog rings on the springs, but I don't. Um, I like for there just to float across the spring so that way it allows for movement and there's no stress on the, on the burlap. Because I, I, I believe that if you put a hog ring there and it goes to stretch that it might stress the burlap over time. So, if you really want to clean it up, you flip it over like this. Because this is the top of the seat here where there's also going to be some seat foam. What I'll go ahead and do is I like to wrap it over the top. I think originally it was put right here on the bottom right there. But what I usually like to do is I usually like to go over the top. So you can go over the top like this, put the hog ring there, but it's also going to, uh, could possibly be in the way of when it's time for you to put your seat cover on, you'll have a bunch of hog rings there. So this is another method. The other method is good old contact adhesive. Don't go cheap and buy the stuff that comes in a can. It sounds like three men. Spray adhesive, don't use that stuff, never works. So this is technique number 789. So what you do is you spray both sides. Now you end up with a really nice edge there. It's nice and even, so you won't have that wave look like you might have had with some hog rings. So now I have clearance for the hog rings that I'm going to use uh, for when I go to put the seat cover on. There's nothing there in the way. And this glue is gonna hold it just nice, real nice there.
There's something that I really like about restored seat springs. So we have a black powder coated seat springs here uh, in contrast with uh, the new burlap. And I just love the way this looks. Um, kind of goes back to something that I learned a long time ago. Most guys would say, well, what's the big deal? Uh, nobody's ever gonna see the back of the seat anyway. So that kind of reminds me of the, that if there's ever a future owner for this car, they're gonna see this and they're gonna say, well, man, if, the, if that back of the seat, the back of the back seat is this nice, the rest of the car must be pretty nice too. So it kind of brings me back to the day when I did about 40 Ferraris for uh, Drew Alcazar of Russo and Steel, who also used to be with Bear Jackson. Um, I asked him one time, I, I said, uh, how, how do you know when you're buying a good car? So the story that he told me was that the first thing he looks at is the glove box. If the glove box has been nicely restored, then the rest of the car must be pretty nice. So anyway, that's something that stuck with me all these years. And this is the result. This is what you're looking at right now. It's still a philosophy that I use today. Uh, if you think it has been helpful to you, please uh, like the video, subscribe and comment. Um, it sure helps out my new growing video uh, channel. Um, been doing this all this time and now I got a video channel. I'm, I am a working upholstery shop, so I do something different every day. So there's going to be a lot more videos coming. So until then, we'll see y'all later.